What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Dogfish Head Craft Brewery, and they're out of Milton, Delaware, and this is their 90-minute Imperial IPA. So this is an Imperial IPA that comes at 9% alcohol by volume, 90 IBUs at the time of review. I don't know exactly how old this bottle is, but it does have a Best Buy date of July of 2024. Considering we're about four months away from that month, we should be more than good to go. So I have not reviewed 90 Minute on the channel, which sounds crazy because it is, but I have reviewed 60 Minute. I reviewed their uh, Utopia's Barrel Aged 120 Minute, but I haven't reviewed this or the base 120. I'll try to review 120 later this year. Now, the reason why I haven't picked this one up to review is because it's very difficult to find a relatively fresh bottle of this as a single. If I bought a six pack or maybe a 12 pack, I probably could find it a bit fresher. So when I happened upon this bottle, which seems to be under two months old, typically they give like six months uh, for their beers, which I would think this one was um, bottled sometime in January, so it's definitely under two months old by the time I'm reviewing this. That's all I want. When it comes to these shelfy beer reviews that I review, this is a beer I'm reviewing as a shelfy beer review for the month of March 2024. When I when I do these uh, shelfy uh, beer reviews uh, of hop four beers, I just want them to be somewhat fresh. They don't even need to need to be super fresh. They don't have to be like five days old. But a lot of times I see this and it's like four, five, six months old. Like whatever. Anyway. It's a classic, iconic East Coast Imperial IPA, and we're going to review it today. So I'm going to crack this one open and get it in the glass and see what we got going on here. Um, I always think it's like this is the logo. But yeah, anyway, they continuously hop this one for 90 minutes, very similar to their 60 minute, which they do, but only for 60 minutes. Same thing with 120. Um, and I'm using their hashtag proper glassware because this is the IPA glass, but it has the dogfish head um, logo on it. So I'll pour it all in. I didn't. I didn't know if it was gonna make it or not. This this uh, glass definitely produces a huge head on it every single time I use it. So now I reviewed 60 Minute about maybe like four and a half five years ago. It was back in 2019, and uh, yeah, it's all oh, look at the car. The carbonation is insane. Now um, that beer, I like 60 Minute. I gave it a 3.9. It's probably in the, you know, the four range for me. I've always enjoyed this one a little bit more. So yeah, the carbonation is crazy. It has that like copper, like almost like. Yeah, like a copper, like reddish goldish color, but definitely more copper than anything. Has a pretty good clarity to it. Again, carbonation is crazy. It has the notch, uh, the etching at the bottom, uh, the nucleation to promote, promote the carbonation. Has about a three, three and a half finger of this, I'd say lightly tan, maybe even like slightly khaki colored head. Some big bubbles with some smaller, it looks frothy. It looks like a frothy head. Hold it up to the light. Yeah, it looks beautiful. And uh, it's in the hashtag. Proper glassware, does that look like a beautiful beer? I think it does, despite the fact that the head is ridiculous and it's not even my fault. Uh, some, somewhat my fault, but like this, this glass always does that, um, it seems, for anything that has decent carbonation to it. Anyway, let's get a nose if I can get through this crazy head. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's very akin to that 60 minute, just a little bit like more intensity. So yeah, it's caramel, it's bread, a little bit of honey from the malt. And then a, a bunch of citrus and pine, and it's more of like a tangerine, orange, um, white grapefruit. So like more of like a bitter and grapefruit in the nose. But yeah, there's definitely pine there. A little bit of like a sprucey kind of character, a floral-esque kind of pine. I'm getting a, a slight minerality, which is weird. Like in the nose, like it has like a, like if you, uh, how can I explain this? Like you ever had any kind of like water that has like a high minerality content? Like in the nose, I'm smelling it. Like, I don't know. If you ever like drank from like a freshwater uh, creek or something like that. It has a touch of like a slight like English kind of vibe to it. Like a little bit of a copper coin like earthiness. <clears throat> there's a there's a touch of like fruitiness that's more akin to like a, like maybe like a, like a peach or maybe apricot marmalade. It smells really nice. I cannot smell a 9%. Like, there's no booziness in the nose. Yeah, it smells really good. Let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Ooh. This is... I, I know I didn't have the same opinion of this the first time I had it. Probably, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago. Certainly not even the last time I had it. Last time I had it, it was like 2018-19. Um, it, was, it was before that 60-minute. 
And I gave it a four out of five on a tap. And I remember just saying it's a really good, you know, no frills kind of, you know, old school American IP, uh, Imperial IPA. But during this right now, I am reminded that like back then it was probably more of a shock to my palate. Now, this is scary drinkable at 9%. Like it's crazy. Body mouthfeel. Buying this one has a little bit of like a more of a thicker feel compared to the 60 minute, right? The higher side of medium, lower side of full. Um, it's not like syrupy, but it's just eh, maybe a touch of like syrupy kind of nature. The mouthfeel, super crisp. Like this is moderately carbonated. It's very smooth on the palate. There's no creamy sensation. It's not soft. It's an old school IPA, imperial IPA that is. You don't really, you know, you're not looking for that. At least I'm not. Like stylistically, I think the mouthfeel is very appropriate. This is dangerously drinkable. This is way more drinkable than I remember. So first things first, there is a, a, a pretty heavy malt character here. And again, this is a fresh bottle or a relatively fresh bottle. Four from, and I remember getting this in the, in the 60 minute, but it's a more pronounced in the, in the 90. It's a mixture of like honey, caramel, and bread. Like almost you took like a white bread or maybe even like, like maybe a slight like sourdough bread and you, and you put some honey and you put some caramel on there and that's kind of like the forefront. Like it has a sweeter malt base and it dies underneath the palate. Now it's omnipresent, but it never is like the predominant note, but it's definitely noticeable throughout the palate. After that, a lot of citrus, but not as much as the nose was indicating. It's more pithy and zesty orange and grapefruit. That hits me right after that malt. As it passes through, 100% that apricot marmalade, peach marmalade, some kind of stone fruit marmalade, I would say, but I would say lean more towards like the apricot side of things. That's like right in the middle of the palate, 100%, maybe even like a touch of like an orchard fruit to some degree as well. Maybe a pop of like a mango or a pineapple, but very, very, um, very minute as far as like the, the quality of it in, in the palate and like the intensity. The finish. This is where I remember this beer being like kind of like a, it, I always remember this one not being as bitter to me as the 60 minute because of the substantial malt character, right? But I remember it being more bitter. This has like a mild to moderate bitterness, more approaching moderate. I remember it being more like a firm moderate bitterness, right? It definitely has a bitterness. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's like, Again, approaching moderate bitterness. The key thing for me, though, is it's very dry on the palate. This is almost full-on dry. So it's definitely sweet the first half to maybe two-thirds of the palate, but it, it dries out immensely on the finish with that um, moderate um, bitterness. And it has this floral, like, resinous pine, almost sprucey kind of character on the back of the palate, although it's, again, not as big as... Here's the thing. The fruit character and the... Uh, the actual, like, like again, the, the floral piney thing, the hop character itself is not as pronounced in individual characters in the taste as much as it was in the aroma, which is kind of weird. I mean, I'm tearing this up. Like, I could, I could, here's the thing. It's 9%. I can't fucking tell. I would maybe guess, like, seven and a half, eight max. A little bit of warming in my chest and in my stomach. Nothing on the palate. I really dig this beer way more than I... I don't know, like there's been some beers that I've really enjoyed um, more so than in the past and then some beers I don't like as much in the past. This is definitely is one that I like a little bit more than in the past. A little bit more for sure. The key thing winning me over here is that I do like that malt character being, you know, definitely noticeable. Like it's, it's nice in an old school beer like this to actually taste it. Um, I like the fact that the alcohol is well hidden. I think the body and mouthfeel are appropriate for what I want out of this one. Uh, I do wish there was a little bit more of that like piney floral essence on the back and maybe a little bit more bitter and less dryness. I think that's that's kind of stopping me from going absolutely nuts over this one. Here's, the th here's where I'll end it. I like this one a little bit more than 60 Minute. I think the drinkability of this is just as good as 60 Minute at 3% higher which is kind of crazy. Maybe not though. I, I, maybe after a couple bottles of this, I'd be like, okay, that, that malt character is a little bit too much. I want a little bit more bitterness and so on. But if I have a bottle or two of this, I think I'd rather have one or two bottles of this as opposed to 60, but I probably would re rather just session the 60 than this. That, that's probably where, where I'd leave it. So I definitely like this more. And this is just a classic beer. If you've never had 90 minute from Dog of a Shed, you owe it to yourself, give it a go. It's a really good beer. Uh, 
I don't remember this one being like substantially different, but definitely it is a bit different, but my palate changes constantly and beers that I had, you know, five, 10, 15 years ago are way different now that I try them. Uh, it could be them brewing, could be that, you know, it'd be a lot of reasons, but 90 minute Imperial IPA from Dogfish Head all day, every day, high four out of five, go 4.1. And I could see a lot of people who, you know, drink, uh, drink uh, hazy IPAs and New England IPAs and especially doubles come to this one and be like nah not for me nowadays but you know this is what I kind of you know got into when I started drinking craft beer so like it always holds a special place in my heart for beers like this for sure and it's just a really well-made old-school imperial IPA it's nice so uh price point availability um I paid like 279 for that bottle and I think I want to say six packs are like Depending on where you go, anywhere between like 15 to 16 bucks for a 9% beer, Imperial IPA, you're talking, you know, basically 250 to like 275 a bottle, like all day, every day. And availability is Stockfish Head, you know, they, they formed a company with uh, Sam Adams a couple years back. Um, they have a beer finder on their website. You can pretty much find these all across like the East Coast. Um, if you if you have access to Dogfish Shed, you probably have access to this beer. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to find a single of it like I did. It was tough to find a relatively fresh single. Here's the thing: like, if I if I was doing this blind, I might say this is like a faded, you know, Imperial IPA. I might say that. But I'm pretty sure they give six months on the date, so I, I'm almost positive this was bottled in January. It doesn't taste old. It just it's a little bit malt heavy and like malt driven. For what I remember this beer being, but you know, I could be just mis 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 misremembering. Shout out to Andy Pettit and Roger Clemens, except for don't. Um, anyway, I'm gonna shut this one down. If you've had this one before, post in the comment section, let me know what's your preference between 60, 90, and 120. Have you ever had the 75? I, I did enjoy the 75. I don't think I liked it as much as 60 or 90, but it was it was fun. Um, I don't know if they'll if they release that one occasionally. I have to put it this way, I have to review all the minutes at some point. So I have to review the regular 120. And if they ever release the 75, I will give that a go as well. So anyway, I'm gonna shut this one down. Good beer. I'm glad I revisited it. Revisited, revisited this one. And uh appreciate everybody stopping by to the next one. Cheers.